hundreds of millions of people on planet Earth who are not likely to burn in hell for being pagans or for not being God's chosen people. In any case, all religious fundamentalism is a danger to human progress. For God, whether it is Mr. Bush's or Mr. Bin Laden's, for God, by definition, is on everybody's side. Outside of religion, exaggerated claims continue to be made in the realm of aesthetic discourse. What is classical is for many clearly European in the narrow view, while all else is popular or ethnic. So arguably the only uh, serious instrument, in musical instrument, invented uh, in the 20th century, which played your national song, um, would be regarded as ethnic. The Caribbean and the Americans, and the Americas rather in general, by their sheer output of artistic innovation have long challenged this in an inspired commentary in a program brochure for the Trinidadian production, a recent Trinidadian production complete with steel band of the European opera, Orpheus and Eurydice by Goodblow. Pat Bishop, that talented Trinidadian director of the Lydian Singers, had this to say, and I quote, one of the great fears today is that globalization will extinguish those aspects of our culture which are special to us and which give us a particular identity. For the Trinidadian, this is particularly complex since our reality has always been culturally multifaceted and multidimensional. Globalization merely intensifies our cultural kalalu, and in the Lydians, we simply pray for the will and the strength to live out our human possibilities, whatever they may be. If we can set aside the boundaries of space, time, history, and circumstance, then even a panma can be obvious and dance like a fancy saint, provided we have the courage to let the grace of Amor, the God of love, prevail. End of quote. Such is the voice of a creative, diverse Caribbean sensibility, which thrives consciously on creative diversity and crosses cultural encounters without loss of centrality to the African presence in the mix. And as in the case of physical migration of peoples from the developing to the developed world, there is colonization in reverse in all of Western Europe in a deeply cultural sense. France and the Netherlands, as I um, said, are hooked on zoo. British and German youths can hardly do without reggae and dancehall, and the calypso of the Southern Caribbean has long taken root in the North Atlantic. Jamaican Rastafarianism has attracted sympathizers across the globe, thanks in part to the reggae megastar Bob Marley. Now Ja lives other than in the Caribbean. The pop music of the Americas belongs to the world. And like the cinema, the great 20th century art form, serves to link continents and especially the younger generation now inhabiting the continent. American jazz, born in New Orleans, despite efforts to give the kudos of paternity to Sebastian Bach, is easily the classical music of the 20th century, as the Europeans themselves would aver. The entire world is gone Creole in the Caribbean sense, of forging from the disparate elements of a village world, new expressions challenging us all to a new sense of self, a new view of the world, and of course, a new way of knowing. The truth is, the futures of different generations of Caribbean people were always shaped 
by the interdependence of those who found themselves in encounters of different kinds in this part of the world. The slave master was highly dependent on the slave and vice versa. In fact, the emancipation of the slaves in the English-speaking um, islands, 1838 to 1848, was the liberation of both masters and slaves. Since, to quote myself, the jailers and the jail are both in jail. That interdependence gave rise to the awesome process of creolization, with differing elements now coalescing, now separating, now being assimilated, now resisting, now counter-resisting in a dynamic, contradictory relationship that produced agony, but also new life. St. Lucian Derek Walker, the 1993 Nobel laureate for literature, has put it beautifully and graphically, and I quote, the tribe in bondage learned to fortify itself by the cunning assimilation of the religion of the old world. What seemed to be surrender was redemption. What seemed the loss of tradition was its renewal. What seemed the death of faith was its rebirth. End of quote. Not everyone will agree with Walcott's delicate literary craft of his regions, dialectical becoming. But all we, we need to remember is that only in the first book of Genesis did anything come out of the void, and it took all of six days. The so-called globalization, defined mostly in economic terms, has its counterpart in the cultural field. But here is where it is likely to fail as that earlier globalization, otherwise known as imperialism, did. For the natural antidote to the poison of homogenization, which is what cultural globalization threatens, is the retreat to areas of specificity where people feel secure because they control the processes that make them bad. I refer to such areas as religion, the arts, and private philosophies about self and society. Caribbean society retreated to these areas with rich results in religious expressions and the creative arts, visual and performing, as well as homespun philosophy to be found in the oral literature which houses the collective wisdom of our ordinary people. They are not likely to abandon such ancestral cradles of independence. In God's house, there are indeed many mansions, and a world which ignores the fact of plurality of te texture in the human makeup, of the mu multifaceted nature of all living beings, and the systems and structures they create for their survival is not a world that is fit for human habitation. This strikes a responsive chord in the ears of many Caribbean people whose cultural specificities turn on the result of the catalytic effect of Africa on other cultures on American soil and have been denigrated for that reason. That such denigration is unacceptable for human development is beyond debate. Does any of this make sense for St. Martin in its celebration of its core cultural values? In the academy, Madam President, linear approaches to learning, whether in teaching or research, will have to give place to the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach to the investigation, discovery, delivery and diffusion of knowledge to cope with the